All right, folks, let's check in with our friends over at The Daily Wire. So Michael Knowles, um, if you'll recall, he's the fascist at The Daily Wire that thinks that all of these social laws should be in place to, like, prevent interracial marriage, to prevent gay and trans people from existing, to have, like, public indecency laws. Okay, so if any of you heard, Lauren Boebert recently went to a child-friendly play with her trans-friendly bar-owning Democratic boyfriend to get felt up and given over the pants job to her man at this child-friendly play while she vaped in front of a pregnant woman. Okay, so there was some backlash on that. You know, not from anyone on the right. (laughs) Don't get it twisted. Just backlash from people in general saying like, hey, aren't you a Christian? Aren't you like against, you know, kids going to drag queen story hour? Aren't you against grooming? Why are you doing this at this play? But don't worry, because here to run to her defense is ultra religious, very Christian, very family values oriented Catholic Michael Knowles to tell you why what she did was bad. I'm just kidding. Here's how he makes excuses for her. Uh, My friend Lauren Boebert has gotten in a bit of hot water because there was a hidden camera in a dark theater catching her getting... Pause. It wasn't a hidden camera. It was security footage. First, people reported on it that were there, said something. Then she lied about it. And because she lied publicly, the security footage was released. I love how, like... Even when it comes to little things, like just little details, they can't not lie. They always have to lie. Hidden camera. It wasn't a fucking hidden camera. It was security. Okay. Uh, Lauren has since apologized. No, she didn't. She said, yeah, you know, going through stuff in my life and I fell into this temptation of bad behaviors. And anyway, I'm sorry. It's really embarrassing and really sad. She didn't say any of that. And she didn't apologize for her behavior. The only thing she said was that she regretted going on a date with a Democrat. Uh, good enough for me. Good enough. Some people were saying, good enough. how could anyone accept Lauren Boebert's apology? I think, well, I don't know, because she's on our team. And it's not... There it is. That's it. He doesn't need to say anything else. He doesn't need to say anything else. Because she's on our team. That's it. There is no other deeper meaning folks there's no deeper reason it's she's on our team therefore we are going to move on and forgive her if you're not on our team we will rake you over the coals over every single little thing that you may or may not even do but if you're on our team you can have dry sex in the theater and like talk about how you care about christianity and family values and everything's fine look the other way nothing to see here hypocritical to uh, extend a little bit more grace to the people who are your allies that's called politics first of all and it's a good thing to do when your side is promoting good things and the other side is promoting very bad things oh my gosh didn't this guy go to yell or something and that's his analysis we defend her because we promote good things and they promote bad things Serious? That's your defense. Oh my gosh. Also, he says, we're just extending grace to her. No, you're not extending grace. Grace would be, hey, what you did was really messed up and really wrong and you should apologize and not do it again. But we'll move on. It's acknowledging the wrong and then moving on. They're not even acknowledging it. They're just defending her full stop. I think if someone apologizes, generally if people apologize, it's good to accept the apology. But certainly if it's someone on your team, I think that's fine. They don't accept uh, Democrats' apologies. Two, I think she is legitimately embarrassed by it. And we've all done embarrassing things. And we've all done a lot of embarrassing things when we thought we were sitting in the dark. And then when there are security cameras that can see in the dark, that uh, can be even more embarrassing. And uh, and I like how he just says, we all do embarrassing things, especially when we're in the dark. Speak for yourself. What are you trying to tell us? Also, the the third reason, and I think the the strongest reason for accepting an apology like this, is Lauren is saying, look, I 
I did something bad. I fell short of my standards and I'm ashamed of it. And I regret that. That's like not how she said it or what she said. Okay. For doing things that the liberals exalt as positive goods. Anything you can accuse Lauren of doing, the liberals say is good. It's empowering. It's, it's wonderful. It's expressive. It's virtuous. Liberals were not criticizing her for what she did. They were criticizing her for lying and criticizing her for being a fucking hypocrite. Talking about family values, take your kids to church, not drag shows. Don't be indecent. And then doing everything she says that she's against and not just says she's against. She's a legislator. She is a congressperson. So she's trying to make rules for you that she doesn't have to follow. That's why people were criticizing her. And so when they attack her for it, it's obviously uh, disingenuous. Because Your the, whole the only, personality uh, is disingenuous. The only crime, according to the libs now, is hypocrisy, by which they don't even really mean hypocrisy. They mean having standards and failing them, which is called sinning, which is called being human. So the only people who no, really would have any no, it was the hypocrisy for this are conservatives. And had she not apologized, I would totally get it. But she apologized. I think she's embarrassed, and I think it's fair enough to uh, you know, move on. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that he just admits that this isn't news. Like the Daily Wire pretends that they're a news outlet, conservative leaning, sure. And that's fine if a news outlet leans one way or the other. The problem is they're not a news outlet. They're a propaganda outfit to do marketing for the right wing and then calling themselves news. He just admits it. My friend... Why is the fact that she's your friend leading it? Shouldn't that not matter? If your whole thing is to talk about what's happening in the news and truth? Thank you for being so transparent accidentally. And then in this other clip, he reveals even more. So again, let's remember the framework here. They're Christians. They don't like Drag Queen Story Hour because it's grooming. But having dry sex in a play that's child-friendly with a pregnant woman isn't. They care about morals. They care about family values. They're so religious. But they love freedom. They're the party of freedom. It's all about freedom. Freedom. Okay, Michael, go. Tell us. I'm all for enforcing public indecency statutes. I think that's a great idea. We haven't done that in a long time. I'm all for going after material and behavior that appeals no to one current interest that could be obscene. That. I think that's a great idea. I don't think they're going to get Lauren on this. I don't. I don't think the the camera. In Such the a theater, creepy like, smile. I don't think it really rises to that like level. Like a Cheshire but cat. I have noticed that there are a lot of Republican counties in Colorado. Denver is very blue, but there's a lot of Republican counties. And those Republican counties have Republican DAs. And I've noticed a lot of counties in Colorado have Drag Queen Story Hour. <laughs> Google Drag Queen Story Hour Colorado. You will see pages and pages of events come up. And I think that if Colorado all of a sudden wants to get serious about prosecuting lewdness in public, public indecency, well, that's great. Then those Republican DAs should arrest every single one of those drag queen story hour performers. Think about how insane that is. I know that he's like an out and out fascist, like he's openly fascist, we get that. But these are the people that say that they love freedom. They're about freedom. And you wanna arrest drag performers that read to children, that's all they do. They just exist and they read to children. And see the conflation he's making there. He's conflating Drag queen story hour, drag people that just exist. He's conflating that to public indecency. Don't let them get away with that. Don't let them just skirt by with it. Make them answer for it. Because that is what he just said, and that is what they all believe. They believe that trans people should not exist. They don't want drag queens to exist. They don't want gay people to exist. They want to go back to the 1800s where being gay or having gay sex was criminal. 
They want drag performers to not exist. They want them to be illegal. That's why he's likening it to public indecency. The conflation again of their groomers. I also noticed that there are a lot of pride parades in Colorado. And I've noticed that those pride parades are pretty lewd. They're pretty indecent, aren't they? Not really. Why does he keep doing that creepy smile? Weird stuff to each other on floats and in the street. So I think this is good. Colorado wants to start getting tough on lewdness. I'm all for it. (laughs) Then all of those Republican DAs should start arresting and prosecuting every one of those attendees at the pride parades, which are extremely indecent. They're not indecent. Extremely lewd. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Have there been specific individuals that every once in a while maybe did something a little inappropriate at a pride parade? Sure. But he's not talking about that. He's talking about pride parades in general. That's why he said arrest all the attendees. He not only wants pride parades not to exist, he wants the attendees, people who just support pride, People who just support the LGBTQ plus community. He wants them to be arrested. Drag queen story hour. Freedom. And pride parades are much worse than anything Lauren Boebert did in a theater. You heard it. In part because. You heard it here first, folks. Pride parades existing while gay or trans or anybody else in the community. Being a drag queen that just reads is way worse than jacking off someone in a theater in front of children. ...of the extreme behaviors that they engage in there, but in part because what they do at Drag Queen Story Hour and the Pride Parades, unlike what happened in the theater, is unnatural. So it's all bad stuff, but... It's unnatural. Okay, so let's extrapolate that a little bit. So it's unnatural. So you want to make existing in a way that is quote unquote unnatural illegal. And you're also saying that having lewd, inappropriate sexual encounters at a play that has children and pregnant women is natural. It's natural. It's like taking a shit. It's just natural. It's like you wake up, you pee. You eat, you get felt up in a theater. I mean, normal, very normal things. The reason why this is really important to highlight is because you need to understand if you self-identify as a Christian or a religious person and you think that these people are the ones looking out for your interests, this ain't it. These people are evil. These people to me are much more evil than any extreme person on the left. Because the people on the left, they don't pretend to be religious and claim God. These people are blasphemous, okay? They take God and Jesus and the word, they twist it to fit their fascist agenda to try to oppress people. That is evil.